president issued this statement on Twitter. It's unclear what he's referring to. It says, quote, totally clears the president. Thank you, exclamation point. Uh, what, what, you're laughing. I, I'm not exactly sure what the president is referring to. Well, you know, I would say that there's nothing that totally clears the president because the document um, from the Southern District of New York continues to implicate President Trump. It says that he's the one who directed Michael Cohen to make payments to women during the campaign. So that's a clear implication. And this latest one from Mueller's team, it doesn't directly implicate the president, but it also doesn't clear him. It says that Michael Cohen was out there making up a lot of lies to try to protect President Trump. And we know that Donald Trump not only went along with these lies, but parroted a lot of them during the campaign and once he was in the White House in terms of the, the Moscow project, but also his payments to women. So I'm not sure how, how this exonerates yeah, I'm not sure what he's Maybe Jim Acosta, our chief White House correspondent, understands what the president is referring to. You just saw the tweet as well, right, Jim? Uh, that's right, Wolf. Uh, and, uh, you know, individual one uses uh, roughly five or six words here. Uh, totally clears the president, period. Thank you. Uh, it is very strange, uh, Wolf, to see the president uh, tweet that. Obviously, uh, he is trying to send the message, uh, you know, and I, I will probably hear other things from him as the, as the night goes on, or perhaps tomorrow morning. He's trying to get the message out to his supporters as soon as possible that he feels that what Michael Cohen uh, is faced uh, with, uh, with this, this filing that went into the uh, Southern District of New York earlier today uh, somehow is beneficial to him. But as, as you guys were just saying over the last hour or so, you go through all of these documents, and obviously it doesn't uh, clear the president. And as we saw earlier this morning, there was this blizzard of tweets uh, from the president, a tweet storm uh, earlier today. He's, he was obviously very frustrated, obviously very concerned about what was going to unfold later on today. And it, it seems as in his immediate reaction, his initial reaction, is that he feels like there's nothing really in this, this Cohen filing that's that's damaging to him. Now, if I mean, if you as you've been saying just a few moments ago, if you read through these documents, if you read through this filing, especially when you get to the part where Michael Cohen uh, providing information to the special counsel's office about contacts uh, with the White House, individuals associated with the White House in 2017 and 2018, perhaps the president has not read that portion uh, of these documents or perhaps his lawyers haven't filled him in on that. Uh, but that obviously, I mean, I, I would think that that would be worrisome to any White House, uh, especially for a, a White House that is uh, on the verge of bringing in a new attorney general. Uh, you know, th that, that, that is just a, a universe of worries, I would think, for a White House because they don't exactly know what uh, specifically the special counsel's office is referring to there, but they are very much talking about contacts uh, that Michael Cohen has relayed to the special counsel's investigators. And Wolf, I think uh, the other thing that is, is very important and, and somewhat damaging in this filing from the special counsel's office with respect to Michael Cohen is we have new information now about what was going on uh, between Michael Cohen and, and Russians during the campaign. Uh, that Michael Cohen is now talking more extensively, according to the special counsel's office, about those contacts that the, that the Trump campaign, that uh, then candidate Trump, uh, his various spokespeople said, uh, was not going on. And so, uh, you know, I, to me, that, that, that would be somewhat worrisome to the president. But if you, if you weigh this against what he was saying earlier this morning, and it was just almost unhinged in terms of the, the tweets that were coming from the president, uh, he was talking about uh, all sorts of things going, he was using his usual superlatives in referencing the Mueller investigation. Uh, when you weigh that against this very brief tweet from the president in the last couple of minutes, where he feels that, you know, he's been totally cleared in all of this, he, he must feel in some way relieved by what is in this filing. Uh, but as we've all been noting, noting uh, Wolf, over the last hour, he's certainly not out of the woods. Yeah, he certainly isn't. That explains why earlier in the day uh, in the series of tweets, he was really attacking Robert Mueller, trying to undermine the entire investigation. One line here, Robert Mueller and Lincoln Lyon, James Comey are best friends. Just one of many Mueller conflicts of interest. He also says, will Robert Mueller's big time conflicts of interest be listed at the top of his Republicans only report. Uh, so he's, he's clearly going after Mueller in a brutal, brutal way. Oh, that's right, Wolf. And I, and I think as everybody's been observing all day long, and, he, and he's been doing this for months now, Wolf, he is obviously trying to soften up the perception among his supporters uh, as to what uh, Robert Mueller's motives are. Uh, he's been referring to 12 angry Democrats and, and so on, working on the Mueller team, uh, making very personal comments about members of uh, Robert Mueller's team. Uh, this is obviously all designed to, to weigh on the minds of his supporters and to uh, sort of damage 
uh, and soften up uh, the, the way that his supporters look at, at the special counsel. Uh, overlooking, the, the president has overlooked uh, on numerous occasions that Robert Mueller is a Republican and so on. And so I, I think, Wolf, that this is all part of a public relations strategy that the president's been uh, in the middle of for, for many, many months now. I, I do think it's odd to see this very brief tweet from the president, but my sense of it is, is that he feels relieved uh, based on what he's read so far, what's been read to him, explained to him uh, in this filing this afternoon, Wolf. All right, now stand by, because there's going to be another filing uh, coming in uh, from Mueller involving Paul Manafort, the former Trump campaign chairman. Uh, let me bring in Shimon Prokopez. Uh, Shimon, prosecutors for the Southern District of New York, they were not lenient on Michael Cohen at all. What did they tell the court? Yeah, well, uh, you're absolutely right. They were not. I mean, when you look at what the Southern District filed and then what the uh, Mueller team filed, it's like it's two completely different positions. And here's how they describe how the Southern District describes Michael Cohen. Uh, they say that he's an attorney and businessman commit, who committed four distinct federal crimes over a period of several years. He was motivated to do so by personal greed and repeatedly used his power and influence for deceptive ends. They say that he seeks extraordinary leniency, a sentence of no jail time, based principally on his rose-colored view of the seriousness of the crimes. Uh, he claims to, to be a sympathetic personal history and has provision of certain information to law enforcement. But key here is that the crimes they say uh, he committed by Cohen were more serious than his submission allows uh, and were marked by a pattern of deception that permeated his professional life. So they're clearly calling him uh, an outright liar that he continued to do so. And really, they are not uh, asking for a substantial amount of leniency here from the judge. They want him to do a lot of jail time uh, for the charges that they have brought against him, Wolf. Which of these uh, Cohen filings do you read as more significant and possibly very damaging to the president? Look, I think we already know what Cohen has implicated the president in, in terms of the Southern District of New York, and that is the payments, saying that he coordinated with him. I think what's very significant here is what we see in the Cohen filing. How they describe his assistance is that uh, he has provided, he has been useful in four significant respects. And this kind of lays out here what the Mueller investigation has been. Uh, we hear of contacts that they uh, are now aware of between the company. That is uh, presumably the Trump organization. The president has talked about this red line, that if the Mueller team starts looking into his business dealings, um, he's going to have some concern with that. And it's clear that that's what's going on here, that there was contacts between the company and Russian interests during the campaign. There's a line here in the ways in which he's helping the special counsel, where he's providing relevant and useful information concerning his contacts with persons connected to the White House during the 2017 to 2018 time period. That's recent. That's while the president is the president. That's not the campaign. That's not the transition. So there's clearly aspects uh, of this investigation that are now deep into the White House. Uh, and really, I think the other thing that's so important here is they describe certain discrete Russia-related matter core to the special counsel's investigation that essentially he is providing help on. These are contacts with company executives uh, that Russians have had during the campaign. Again, we're seeing a lot of terminology in these Mueller documents about the company, company executives. Who are those company executives? And this suggests to me that the Mueller investigation is a little larger than just folks who perhaps were working on the campaign. This is now going into the company, Trump's red line, his business dealings. So we'll see how he responds to this. But this clearly, to me, lays out exactly what the special counsel uh, has been doing and where Michael Cohen has been significantly helpful to them.